SMT Nation, we back with another video. We've got two pieces of news to look at here. The articles are from Fierce Wireless. I'll link both in the description. The first one is a Verizon network update. Kind of puts them on pace to do something unique and different and I guess sort of specialized with the exception of maybe Dish because it's kind of what they're doing. Uh, but it's a very future looking network investment that's going to pay huge dividends for them and how they've set it up is really, really smart and wise. I'll discuss that first. And then second, we'll talk about the AT&T contract that they have. And uh, this one's pretty big for them as well. All right. So the, the first piece of news here from Verizon, they've got 8,000 VRAN cell sites that are currently active right now. That means that they have been deployed and these virtualized radio access network sites, I guess they're looking to get in about 20,000 of these by the end of 2025. Now, when I first saw this, the first thing I thought about was I know that Samsung is VRAN ready. Virtual radio access networking, that is Samsung's specialty. There, there may be other vendors who are kind of like on the same type of technology, meaning that they have it and all of those things. But like currently Verizon is the only carrier I think that outside of Dish has any type of VRAN going on officially. So like they would disclose it, they would discuss it in terms of the network and all of that. So uh, the big benefit here is the fact that by going with this VRAN, it allows them to hyperscale and allows them to offer a unique network access for a lot of different use cases that are going to be latency dependent. So with this, we've, we've already seen like the mobile edge compute with the mech situation. We've seen Verizon bagging deals and contracts with like healthcare centers and Walmart and Walgreens and all that. This is probably why Verizon is getting those deals and getting those contracts because they've got they've gone this far ahead in the development of their VRAN systems. And it's it's in Samsung. That's how they're doing this. So I have not heard of this from Nokia yet in the U.S. at least. And I have not heard of this from Ericsson either. And, and those vendors are definitely going to they'll be in on the VRAN uh, technologies. And, and when it comes to the marketplace, that's the direction we're going in. ORAN, VRAN. So I totally get it. Uh, but Verizon seems to be ahead in this. They've got relationships with all three hyperscalers. All right. So Amazon Web Services, the Google Cloud, and also Microsoft Azure. And those are the big three. All right. There are no bigger companies. I mean, I, I think I think Alibaba and there's some Chinese companies out there do it, but they're not doing business with those guys. All right. So th this is probably going to put Verizon in the catbird scene when it comes to latency and 5G use cases that require that really instantaneous connection, that stable, uh, fully responsive connection. And we're probably going to see an instant reduction in latency that's extremely tangible once they launch their standalone 5G core. And that's just commercial deployment, like for consumers like you and me. When it comes to like specific APIs and network slicing and things that are going to be happening in enterprise, Verizon is going to be offering something completely distinguishable that I think both T-Mobile and AT&T are a little bit behind on. And I'm not saying Verizon's five years ahead of them or anything, but it just, when you see the the contracts that Verizon is getting, it gives you that impression that they've already convinced people that they're there and they're ready to do this. All right. So, it, and it looks like it's going to be probably specific to like Samsung markets. Mine is a Samsung market. Uh, Verizon has their own fiber here as well. So I think that may have something to do with this. All right. So we, we also got an update today from Verizon. Uh, that they officially have reached a 40%, 48% of fiber run to their sites. I know their goal is to get to like 50% here shortly. They should achieve that without any issue. Uh, so they're still investing in their fiber. You may not be getting file service to your area, but it doesn't matter to Verizon. They're running it for their sites. And they know that they're going to need 10 gig backhaul as a bare minimum for their C-band sites. Well, how about 25 gig and 50 gig circuits and 100 gig circuits moving forward as they look to create these massive network circuits for all the things that are be going on, whether it's enterprise or unique net network slicing for private networks. The future is bright and very interesting. I'll tell you guys, this is exciting. Very, very exciting. Uh, look for more growth in the VRAN for Verizon very, very soon. We'll be updating this uh, for sure in the near future. All right, next piece, this one out of AT&T. They've got a deal with Lockheed Martin. They are testing private 5G for helicopter data. This is pretty crazy. All right, military helicopters evacuate troops from combat zones. Ground crews read aircraft-generated data to ensure choppers are operating safely. AT&T is going to be the 
They're going to be the ones doing this through 5G transmitting data for Lockheed Martin. Folks, I, I'm pretty sure Lockheed Martin, as a contractor for the U.S. military and so on and the, and the government, that's a major company deal, right? We're talking about a company that's probably over $100 billion in market cap. Everything goes through Lockheed Martin when it comes to these types of things. And uh, AT&T involved. All right. So what they're doing here, it says the data cartridge is put into a laptop, connects to a private 5G radio antenna node. Of course, they're going to be making sure that that is completely secure and encrypted and nothing can penetrate and get in there. AT&T is using 39 gigahertz. Folks, that's millimeter wave for those of you that aren't aware. I know a lot of people love their mid band. Uh, but millimeter wave will be unlocking the true power of 5G. Uh, the mid band important to us on our mobile handsets. But when it comes to this type of stuff, you got to go millimeter wave. All right. Testing uh, in Colorado. They're testing a system, uh, defense system, giant uh, 5G mill, I guess is what they're calling it. So 5G military. Uh, they also did some data in a Sikorsky private 5G network through a VPN to that network in Colorado. All right, so we got more testing there. Uh, you know, overall, I think this just goes to show you that the companies that are, you know, working with AT&T, you know, DO, DOJ contracts, and, you know, we got stuff like this with Lockheed Martin, and they just did something with the Navy, and Verizon gets these kind of contracts. I was really kind of hoping at some point, like, T-Mobile would get some of these, but it just continues to feed into the big two. Uh, so AT&T and Verizon inking these deals and doing all this testing, 5G. <laughs> you guys wonder why they're sinking their teeth into 5G and everybody's like, oh, I love my 4G and LTE. It's fine and everything's perfect. This is the direction we're moving. Helicopters, all, the whole shebang. This is pretty sweet. Uh, just another thing, I suppose. Put that on the feather in the cap for AT&T. Tell me what you guys think of the helicopter uh, private 5G network there, and then also the Verizon VRAN. I'm excited for both. They're both pretty cool announcements and pieces of news. Uh, comment down below. You all the voice of the people, the SMT Nation. Let your voice be heard. Like, share, subscribe for more. Turn on the bell notification icon so I miss an upload. Links in the description for my Twitter, my Gmail address for business inquiries, and my Patreon pages down there as well. Thanks for watching. See you all in the next one. Peace.